Hello, this is Pastor Cook of Spirit Life Fellowship, living a spiritual life. We would like to welcome every one of you to our service this day. We pray that you will be blessed through the services and that you will be, find ways to apply this message to your lives and each week. Come and be with us. two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Now there's more than two or three here tonight and we are gathered in his name. And every time that Jesus showed up, things had to change, didn't they? There were certain things that had to change. People were healed instantly when he showed up. So he's in the midst tonight and I guarantee you, if you have a need in your life tonight, do not leave here like you came because you don't have to because Jesus is in the midst hallelujah hallelujah don't you love him tonight praise God praise God we want to welcome those that are watching over the web we want to welcome you to the services of Spirit Life Fellowship Church we're a church that believes in healing we're a church that believes in the power of the living God I tell you, we uh, we gather together, and sometimes the pews uh, aren't full. But I'm telling you, if you can see spiritually and look at these pews, you will see them full. You'll see them full of people with needs in their lives, people that have real issues in their lives. Uh, people have real problems. They have real issues in their life. And they need to know that there's a real God, that there's a Savior that's waiting for them to come and surrender their lives to Him. Aren't you thankful for that? Aren't you thankful for that day that Jesus saved your soul? Aren't you thankful for that? Oh my, where would we be without Him? Where would we be today without Him? We need to think about that sometimes, don't we? We would be most miserable. The Bible declares that we would be most miserable without Him. Had He not been born, had He not came and, and, and surrendered Himself on the cross for you and me, we would be, of all men, most miserable. I'm thankful tonight, aren't you? Will you give the Lord another hand clap of praise as Pastor Cook comes this evening with the Word of God? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Sweet spirit here tonight. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for your presence and for your spirit, Lord, within the house today. I want to talk to you tonight about pray to who? I want to talk to you tonight about pray to who? We go back in the Old Testament times. We go back in the times of the old days and the old scholars. Back in the olden times, a lot of them would say, let's pray to the stars, let's pray to the moon, let's pray to the sun, the different types of planets. Or, or some would say, let's pray to the trees. And then some would say, you know, we would pray to different types of plants. And then they would take and, you know, they would pray to gold or they would pray to silver. They would pray to different types of iron. And, and, but pray to who? Pray to who? All of these things that they talked about praying to was not alive. All these things that they talked about praying to in the olden times and all those of science, if you will. And, and, and I'm going to tell you, there's many beliefs today that, that pray to unknown gods, that pray to wood, they pray to, to uh, glass, if you will. And they, they pray to a lot of different things that do not breathe. But how many of you know there's one that we can pray to? There's one that we can pray to that we will know without a shadow of a doubt. And even in His service tonight, His presence was in this service, and we can feel His presence in this service tonight. But I want to know from you today, pray to who? 
Pray to who? I hear a lot of people saying, pray to God. Well, let's talk about the gods. There's Buddha. He is a god. There's a sun god. There's a star god. There's many different types of gods out there. So, pray to who? The true God. The true Father. The Bible says to call no man father except the Father that is in heaven. And I'm going to tell you, there's only one true God. And that's the one that created the heavens and the earth. That's the one that spoke into existence life. That's the one that spoke into the firmament, if you will, and said divide from one place to the other. And that's, that's the only true God that there is. And how many of you know that uh, He even had a plan for you and I? He still has a plan for you and I. And it's already lined up. It's already there. And I'm going to tell you, your path is already before you, but you better make sure you're looking in the right direction. Pray to who? Think about it. Pray to who? In order to know that right direction, I can't call upon this wood here and, and cry out to the wood and wait for it to give me an answer because I'm going to tell you, in different types of temperatures, it's going to give me different answers. Anybody hear me? The tin that's on my roof, in different types of temperatures, that tin is going to give me different answers, Pastor Paul. If anybody's ever listened to a tin roof and you're sitting there on a hot day and that hot day begins to cool down, that tin begins to crack and pop and different things, I'm going to tell you, that's something that is not really giving me an answer. You know, we might say, whoa, you hear it? It's answering me. It's answering me back. And an old brother, the old little old fat guy that they talk about, I'm, uh, you know, when we was uh, with uh, May Pulse, you know, a man that we had in our home for many months and different things as a missionary to the United States, he was talking about how that they would put plates there for it to eat during the day and, and how that they would feed it meat. And I wondered who to ate the food. But how many of you know there's always a mockery? There's always something that the enemy wants to try to mock, to make true, to make come to pass, pray to who? Who are you praying to? I'm going to give you some examples in a little bit. I love the music we're talking about we're singing tonight because it goes along with some of the word and some of the message. And as I was praying, the Lord said, I want you to preach a message on pray to who? And I said, Lord, what do you mean pray to, to who? And he said, tell them I want them to pray to who? Who is who? We said the Father. Who is who? Jesus. Who is who? Christ. Who is who? The Lord. That's who. The Bible says in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word, guess what, became flesh, and it walked among men, and it became a, a part of a being just like you and I, and it became a personal. Everybody say personal. He became a personal being. In other words, He has a nature of being personal with you and I. How many of you know, I can talk to that board all day long, but there's no personal out, or nothing personal going to happen there. I can talk to the tin all day long, there's nothing personal going to happen there. I can talk to my computer all day long, but nothing's going to happen there unless I do something with an action for a response. Think about it. Sister uh, Trish said earlier, I hope you didn't come here to hurry up and get things done. I hope you didn't either, because I've got probably four pages. The Lord said, pray to who? Pray to who? We're going to go in Scripture. Psalms 39, 12. I guess you've got it all up there. It says, Hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear unto my cry. Hold not thy peace at my tears. Who's he calling out to? Pray to who? The Bible says we're supposed to be in prayer without ceasing. Who are we supposed to be in prayer to without ceasing? Do you know who the Lord actually is? I'm going to be reading a whole lot of things to you, so I want you to get it down pat. I want you to, maybe some of you might need to even read, write, write some of it down. Because who is the Lord? Who is the nature of God in your life? 
We sung about all kinds of it. It blew my mind. And, you know, we sung about a lot of things that's, that, that was going on. But in order to develop a clear ideal of prayer, we must first have a clear ideal of God. Everybody agree? We must have a, first have a, a clear idea of who God is. Basically speaking, God is a personal being. In other words, He likes to be on a personal basis with you and I. Just like me and Brother Horn talking personally together. And, and, uh, and, uh, but now let's go a little bit deeper. Me and my wife together, we get intimate. And he likes to have an intimate relationship with you, a, a personal relationship with you. And that's the God that we serve. He can get personal with you. You cannot get personal with a board. You can't get personal with a piece of orange. Well, some of you can But what I'm saying is, you cannot get personal. Years ago, you might say, well, Brother Cook, what are you talking about? Years ago, I used to carry an aluminum bat in my car. So I could get personal with people. Anybody, none of y'all don't know what I'm talking about. I seen just the other day in somebody's car a wooden bat. So don't be telling me you ain't trying to get personal. All right. Basically speaking, God is a personal, or excuse me, a personal being. This is critical to prayer because it means that God is a person we can interact with. That He has a will and that we are able to relate to Him on a meaningful level. I mean, you know, the Bible says we are created in the image of God. Created in His image. That, that's who we are. We're created in His image. So if He is in, a, in this place of being meaningful, it, you know, uh, we're, we're able to communicate. You know, what blows my mind, you've got all these different languages in the world, and God can communicate with every one of them personally. And He knows what they're saying personally, even though you and I don't know what they're saying. He knows their heart. He knows what they're speaking personally, even though you and I don't know. Even though some are still trying to worship the stars, they're still trying to worship the moon and all these other things, I'm going to tell you, there's no true God except the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no true God that is of any form except the only living God that's living today in the world. And because He's the living God, He's going to make a way where there is no way for you and I. But first we've got to know who He is. There's a lot of us, we're praying to God, thinking we know who He is, and it's, it's hard for us to believe in a lot of things. We were singing earlier about uh, the, the song that we were singing about, uh, Lord help me, all things are possible. We sing all things are possible. Why isn't everything possible happening in your life? Think about it. The God that we serve, if He was, were personal but not uncaring, Excuse me, let's say it one more time. If he were personal but uncaring and distant, prayer wouldn't serve a purpose for us. Think about it. If he was personal but he was uncaring and distant away from us, we have a God that is omnipresent. He's everywhere. All the time. He can be where you are. He can be where I am. I can be in Florida. You can be here. And He can still be there in the same place, able to reach and meet our needs. And we've got to be willing to be able to be a, a people say that this is the God that I serve. I don't serve paper. I don't serve wood. I don't serve the trees. I don't serve the stars. I don't serve the moon and the planets. I serve the living God. Not only do I serve Him, I have a personal relationship. I have a conversation with a friend. The Bible says that He calls His friend. And I have a personal co conversation with my friend. And He will talk to me daily. And He will share with me the things that need to be done in my life. In other words, that road that I was telling you about earlier, He will guide us into all truths. But we've got to be willing to listen to where He's going to guide us. Not only is God personal, He is also loving. Let's go to John. First John 4, 8 and 16. It says, He that loveth not knoweth. Excuse me. He that loveth not knoweth not. Not knoweth not for God. God for God is love. Next one. It's very tricky. And we have known 
and believe the love that God has for, to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. In other words, if we snarl our nose, how many of you know, every creature, every creation, every person that God created, either by war or by free man, we're still supposed to love them. We're still supposed to be willing. And how many of you know, no unforgiveness is going to make it to heaven? You better hear that. Oh, Brother Cook, I forgave them. How many of you know, I've heard a lot of people say, if you forgive, you forget. That's a lie from the pits of hell. I will tell you why. You cannot forget everything that's done gone, went on in your life. And if you say you forgot it, now you can forgive and not let it bother you. The one thing I've learned through the years, when I'd go see certain people in my family that I forgave of that, for some odd reason, something would jump up on my shoulder and say, Do you remember? Anybody know that person? John 3, 16, y'all know it. For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, to whosoever believe in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him, what? Might be saved. We've got to be alive. In relationship to God's omnipotence, Jesus said, Your Father knows what you have need of before you ask, Matthew 6 and 8. God is also wise and holy. Some of you better hear that. The Bible says it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of the needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Because he's so wise, he's so rich, but God has it all. He's holy, he's wise, he's rich, he uses wisdom, and he gives you and I this wisdom. When I was praying up here today at the altar, I was saying, Lord, give me wisdom to lead your people. Give me knowledge, Lord, and understanding of how to lead. Because I'm just a fleshly being. I'm just one that, that God has called into a position, and Lord knows I don't know why. <laughs> but he's called me into a position to do these things, and because he's called me into this position, I have to be obedient to the call. And because I have to be obedient to the call, I have to be obedient to the one that has called. And that is the only God the true God that has raised his son from the dead. It says he knows what is best for us as well as what we will lead, or excuse me, that what will lead us to holiness rather than sin. If you will listen to that still small voice, that still small voice, when he's speaking to you and saying, no, don't do that. Hello? Don't do that. He's telling you. He's teaching you. He's trying to teach you to be what you're supposed to be. He also is intimate, or in, help me, imminent, meaning that God is active in his creation in a personal way, not only directing greater matters of history, but also involved in the life of everyone. He's in your life personally, on a personal basis, constantly. He's in your life and trying to be in your life, but you've got to allow him to be in your life. Sometimes we want to stick our thumb in our mouth and go, don't want to be a part of you right now, Lord. I want to be in my corner. Just leave me alone. But God's saying, I created you in this form. I created you to be who you are. You are to have joy. How many of you know, we may endure for the night, but what? Joy comes in the morning. Some of you need to go to prayer and endure some weeping. Oh, that hit hard. Some of you need to go to prayer and endure some weeping so joy will come in the morning in your life. We need to open up and realize, I'm going to tell you, you know, you're going to get aggravated with this church because we're starting to make prayer number one and we're going to make prayer number one and it's going to be a big priority here at the church. And, you know, I, I, I was thinking coming to church, the Lord said, you know, what are you going to say? And I said, well, Lord, you know, we need to make sure our people's praying. And he said, you know, there's a lot of people that are getting kind of confused because you're bringing them up there. And I said, what do you mean, Lord? They're getting kind of confused. They said, they're not used to that. 
And he said, because they're not used to it, it's going to have to be a slow process. He said, but before you know it, they'll all know what the altar is. That's bad when we don't know what the altar is. Too many churches is taking out their altar today. Too many churches is beginning to take all of that out. And we're being, living a form, if you will, of godliness. And the Bible says if you're living the form of godliness, what do we do? We deny the power thereof. So we need to wake up as the body of Christ. I, I get out there in my lazy chair on the porch, and I just pray and seek God and worship God. And sometimes I get on my bike. It's one of the best places. Uh, people don't like how loud I play my music, but, you know, hey, it's life. But one of the best places I can go and worship God and just get in touch with God. And, and I'm going to tell you, most of the time when he gives me a word, it's like this right here, this message. He only gave me one word. Four pages long. What am I saying? heard Pastor Paul done a great job last Wednesday night. And, you know, it's good that you can have somebody you can rely on that can come and do a great job when i got to be away because of a hospital visit or something. I don't remember what it all was. But, you know, we we got to get ourselves in tune with God. And, and we got to be in tune as a body. we got to be in tune. As, as the Bible says, you know, a, a, a member being dismissed or away from us, you know, we cannot work properly without members in our body. In other words, if you have one hand gone or one foot gone or something, you can't work properly. Amen? So, you know, we've we got to open up and remember that, you know, we've got to allow God to be a whole part of our life. Now, you know, if you want to pray to wood, you can. Nothing's going to happen. Eventually, it's going to begin to rot. Eventually, it's going to fall apart. If you want to pray to the stars and you keep looking at that eastern star right there and eventually that star is going to fall from the sky, what are you going to do? You're going to wish on that one after it falls? And decide who's you going to God's going to be next? Think about it. If you go a little further, this means intimate. This means that no prayer is too great for him. But also that no prayer is too small for him. This is Pastor Jim First of the Spirit Life Fellowship Church, Living the Spiritual Life. We want to thank each and every one of you for joining us today. We hope that you've been blessed by God's Word and His love for you. We pray that you remember to apply His Word to your life and continue to be a light for others as you follow Christ. If you'd like to participate in our ministry by donating, feel free to go online and click the link at the bottom of the screen and give securely with Givelify. We are located in Charleston, West Virginia, in the United States of America. Please join us again next time on Bright Star Christian Television. And if you've missed any previous message, don't worry. You can go back to our Facebook page and, and find them there. But please like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you don't miss any future messages. In the meantime, God bless each and every one of you.